we're going to establish some rules that we've kind of been using but we haven't proven yet. So now it's time to actually say why we're doing some of the things we're doing and why it works out so conveniently. So hopefully you've had enough time to just finish off that line of working. Um, and then you can write this subheading and let me know when you're ready by putting your eyes up. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's have a think about this. Some of the questions you've been doing, right, um, you can see they have multiple terms in them, right? So it's not just, oh, I've got x to the power of n, like x to the power of 5. There's an x to the power of 5, and then there's like a plus another guy, and plus another guy, or subtract another guy. So what we're going to do is establish the rule for when you're dealing with a function that is the sum of two other functions, okay? So we can call this one the sum of functions. Okay, so let's think about this, right? Suppose you've got f of x not just being some solitary x to the power of n, something like that, but what if you've got a couple of other terms, a couple of other functions within that, something plus something plus something. So in order to deal with these, I'm just going to give them some names, okay? So I'm going to, for example, say that my, my big function, whatever I'm dealing with, let's say it's made up of two smaller functions called g and h, okay? Now, what I'm going to think about is, how would first principles tell me how to deal with this object? One of the reasons why we invested so much time in learning first principles, even though you're like, oh, I've learned a rule now. I don't need to use first principles anymore. It takes forever, right? The reason we learned it anyway is because that's your foundation. Um, if you don't have this idea, you don't really know. It's just guesswork. Or you're just accepting a rule someone else told you, and you don't really know why the rule works. So now we're going to use first principles on this thing. It will take some time, but then you can know without a shadow of a doubt. Not just because Mrs. Lees and I tell you. Not just because the textbook tells you. You can see the reasoning. Let's consider f dash x as First principles. Just to go back to the original one, our regular one we were a little more comfortable with. It's h approaching 0. And then can someone recite for me what is the difference quotient for f of x? f, x minus h. f of x. We usually, we usually say x plus. I should point out, you actually can write x minus if you want. It still ends up being the same thing, but we won't worry about the, a new form for now. Uh, it's the other way around. right? We're taking the difference, right? So it's minus. Go back to your diagram. It's in our diagram, right? We're taking the difference, difference quotient, between the top and the bottom values. What did the um, denominator become? H. Just h. Very good. <laughs> There's no plus or minus for me to screw up here. Okay, excellent. Now, if... No, it's, I mean, <laughs> the less things there are to screw up, the better it is, right? If f of x... <laughs> Thanks, guys. We're good to go? If f of x, by definition, I'm saying it's made up of its two other functions, then I can write all of this stuff out just in longer form. I can break it into its like component sections. So I'm going to write this as limit as h approaches 0 of. Whew, okay, take a deep breath. Instead of saying f of x plus h, I'm going to substitute x plus h everywhere I saw x. So I'm going to write it like so. Uh, g of x plus h plus h of x plus h. Do note, like my h here is just the name of a function, which is actually different to this, which is the printed rule. Yeah, good question. So I'm, I'm just dealing with this first term here. Yeah. That guy, right? So by definition, what that means is everywhere you saw x, which at the moment is here and here, replace that with an x plus h. Is that okay? Okay, staying with me. All right, so there, that's the first part. And then what follows minus uh, f of x, which is this whole entire thing, right? So I'm going to write that as, uh, I'm going to do it in big square brackets. There we go. There's my gross looking long numerator, but it's done, okay? All of that is divided by h. Is that all right? So far so good. Okay, now. Here's the thing that's important about this. Look closely at this numerator, right? You've seen before, like when we were factorizing quadratics and stuff like that. Sometimes it's very helpful just to rearrange something and you can see it in a more helpful way. The way I'm going to rearrange it is I'm going to pair up the g's with g's and h's with h's, okay? So here, here's this function of g and this function of g. Let's just write those two and put them together beside each other and we can see them a little more clearly, okay? So here we go. Limit as h approaches 0 of, I've got g of x plus h, that's the first function g, and then take away 
g of x. That's what I have forever there. So far, so good? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm going to surreptitiously leave a large gap here for reasons that will become clear in a second. And now that I've dealt with the g's, I'm going to deal with the h's, that part of the function. So here is the first part. And then there's a minus that applies to everything inside these brackets, right? So I'm going to say minus h of x, like that. So far, so good. Now, this entire thing is all over h. Right? Do you agree with that? The entire thing is all over h. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this apart into two fractions. This over h and this also over h. Is that all right? Now, put your pens down and look carefully at what we've just written. Okay? See this guy, for instance, over here. Right? If I replace these two g's with an f, if I replace the two g's with an f, then wouldn't that be exactly what this line says here? Yeah. Like it's, it's literally identical, except there are g's instead of f's there, right? Which means that what you've got written over here is first principles, but for the function g by itself. Does that make sense? This is the difference question, not for f of x, but for g of x. So therefore, this part here, this entire thing, including the limit, it is by definition, it's g dash. That's, that's what this whole thing is, okay? What about this? Have a look. The limit also applies to this, by the way. It's one big set of brackets, okay? Yes. It's all the same stuff. It's the same difference quotient, by definition, just I've got h's, that's just the name of the function, right? So therefore, that by definition is the derivative of h, h dash, okay? So what I'm saying here is f dash, the way that I would summarize this, the way that I got taught to remember it is the derivative, derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. Let me say that again. The derivative of a sum, this thing here is me taking a g and an h and then differentiating it all together, is the same as taking each of those separately and then adding them back together. Right? Derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. Okay? So that's why when you've been having a look at these subsequent questions and you're like, oh, gross, there's like an x to the 4 and a 3x to the squared plus however, whatever stuff is over here, right? You essentially can say, what this is telling you is, just treat each one individually and then off you go. Okay?